So I'm having Chizara from London. Welcome. So Chizara just connected. For some reasons, Shama has not been connecting. Yeah, Shizara, welcome on board, darling. Okay, Derek is connected to the, <laughs> to the teenagers. That's great. Good to have every one of you. So, sorry, I'm just trying to just connect everyone so that we can start. Yeah, thank you, Derek. That's my Derek. God bless you. Um, so, uh, like I said, um, this uh, tonight, um, by now, I believe we all have our... Hello, that's me. Welcome on board. So I can't see your face. Let me see your face, everyone. I'll be so glad anyway to see Shama, but I can't see her now. She's not connected. Um, Damola, do me a favor. Um, update our teenager okay. group. Yeah, darling. Damola, update our teenager yeah. group. Is it correct? Update our teenager group with um with the Heidi, um, Heidi, you know, to connect. Okay, good. So I'm having Obolo and Olami. Yeah. So everyone, welcome on board. God bless you. So let's start. So let me see your face. I can only see Derek and I think I um, favor just flash now. Not you. Oh, you can't hear me. Hey, Lord help me with this sound stuff. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. So let me see your face, everyone. So I just said uh, Happy New Year to Favor, to um, Olawale, yeah, and Derek. Yeah, I'm seeing you for the first time this year. I've, I think I've seen others. Can I see your face, everyone? So where's Shama? Uh, Shalom. So that's Shalom. Sh um, Sharon, yeah, good. So Favor, welcome. Damola, thank you. I, uh, I, Damala, could you please help me update the teenager war with our Heidi for children who want to connect with who has no idea. Emanuela, thank okay. you, my darling. So, Ini and if you're the one, God bless you. Welcome on board. Zara from London, welcome. Um, Bolu and Ola have said hello, but you couldn't hear me the other time. God bless you. Good to see you. Yeah, so and I'm having um, merit. Thank you for doing your assignment. Some of you. Children, if you to send me your assignment, that's not nice, okay? That's not nice. You need to send me that assignment. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to chase you for that assignment throughout this year. So you need to send me, okay? I need to know your goals for 2021. Okay, tonight we'll be looking at um, the book of Luke, chapter 9. So we stop at chapter 8. I believe we stop at chapter 8. But tonight we'll be looking at chapter 9. And if you've not been following us from chapter 1, over the next um, three, um, one week, you know, you can, you know, Start reading it. Okay. Thank you, um, Damola. Thanks for updating. So I will just lose that. Yeah. Thank you. So make sure you um, invest your time reading the Word of God this year. So if you've not been following us, probably Bolu Hola, um, this year you might want to invest. You know, start probably tomorrow, read chapter one, then over the week, and make sure you catch up. Okay. Okay. So. Tonight we'll be looking at chapter 9 and I'll quickly go through the summary of chapter 9. So Luke chapter 9, um, we have different subtopics under that chapter 9. So the first one we, um, what we'll be reading about will be about Jesus sending out his disciple. You know, the 12 disciples of Jesus planned that in the last class. So um, in the, you know, in the, in, during our Bible reading um, class. So um, the first topic on that Luke 9, chapter 9, is Jesus sent out his disciples, you know, to preach the gospel. So one of us will be reading that, so I don't know who I'm going to assign that to. So, and then the second subtopic will be on how just I fed 5,000 um, men. So we'll read about that, and later we jump into um, why Jesus Christ um, asked who he is. Just I was trying to ask, just to uh, ensure disciple. His disciple know who he is, so that's another subtopic. So the next one was about how Jesus Christ predicts his own death. So Jesus Christ um, predicts his death, and then the fourth, the fifth um, subtitle there will be about the trans transfiguration of Jesus Christ. If you've been hearing that word, so we're going to read about it tonight, so you know the meaning, what it means, uh, what the word transfiguration means. So 
and uh, after that we have um, another subtopic where Jesus Christ healed demons, people possessed with demons, we just Christ healed that. And then the fifth part, uh, Jesus Christ predicted his death the second time. So the first time Jesus Christ predicted it, the second time he predicted it again. So and then last, on um, the second last um, session in that Luke chapter 9, uh, the Sa Samaritan opposition. And then we we'll, don't worry, we we'll learn more about that. And the fourth part is uh, the cost of following Jesus. So following Jesus will cost us one or two things. So we're going to be reading the cost of following Jesus. So the first um, topic um, Jesus sent out his disciple um, to preach. So the first person that we'll be reading tonight will be um, Damola. So Damola will be reading that part. So why Damola read? Um, I will call um, Emmanuela to explain. So the second part, Jesus Christ um, feed the five thousand. So, um, so um, Faber will read that one, and um, Shalom will tell me what he learned. So, um, so let me just the first part. Um, Damala, you'll be reading from verse one to nine. So make note of that, verse one to nine. So be reading. Um, on Luke chapter two. Yes, Luke chapter 9, from verse 1 to 9. So, the mother will be reading that. So, uh, this, um, the second part, Favor. Favor will be reading from 10. Oh, the mother will be reading Luke chapter 9, from verse 1 to 9. So, <laughs> Favor will be reading 10, from verse 10 to 17. And, um, Olawale, you will read from 18 to 20. So that's where Jesus Christ was, and um, favor you are reading from 10 to 17. Which verse? Who is that? Okay, verse. Okay, Lawale, you are reading verse 18 to 20. So Lawale will read verse. Like, uh, what, what book? What book? Okay, look, look, chapter 9. Children, make sure your mind is here, okay? We are reading tonight, uh, Luke chapter 9. Chapter 9, okay? Good. Yeah, yeah. Shalom. One favor read from verse. 10 to 17. Shannon, you will explain. Okay, you will explain what people. So, when I read, I'm going to call in Neoluba to explain. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Olawale will read verse 18. Luke chapter 9, verse 18 to 20. Make note of that, children. Please make sure you have pain. And don't worry, I'm going to remind you anyway when it gets your turn. So, um, Merit will read. Um, okay, before I call Merit, before I call Merit, um, Bolu. Bolu will read verse 21 to 29, 27. So Bolu, you are reading Luke chapter 9, verse 21 to 27. And Merit will explain. Luke chapter what? Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. From verse 21 to 27. So Bolu, you are reading Luke chapter 9, from verse 21 to 27. So Emmanuela. Emanuela, you read Luke 28, Luke verse 28 to 36. So we are talking about 20, uh, chapter 20, uh, chapter 9, okay? So I'm just going to be calling verses, children. So by now you should know the chapter, chapter 9. So Emanuela, you are reading um, verse 28 to 36. And um, Zara from London will explain. Um, Shalom. Uh, Sharon, Sharon, you read verse 37 to 43. Verse 37 to 43. Damola will explain. Okay. Deborah. De okay, Deborah will explain this one. So I'm going to call someone else to read. Um, Fayokumi. So Fayokumi, you read verse 44 to 50. Deborah will explain. Verse 51 to 56. If you are lower. Favor will explain. Verse 57 to 62. Hmm.
Chizara will read. Wisdom will explain. Two people will summarize my class tonight. Where well, I must explain. Who is that person? Wisdom, you were. Hold on. Um, Chizara, you read 57 to 62. Wisdom will explain. Bolu is reading 27 to 27. Merit will explain verse 27, 21 to 27. Don't worry, I'll call you when it's your turn. So, um, three people will summarize my class tonight. You are confused. Don't worry. When you get your turn, I'll call you, okay? Don't worry. That's fine. So, um, three people will summarize my class tonight. Miriam. Peter. And, um, Damola. So, wherever anyone is struggle, I will call Shalom to explain. So, Shalom will be a backup for everybody. Okay, so let's start. So, we are starting, we are in the book of, we are reading tonight, chapter 9, Luke chapter 9, welcome aboard. Um, sorry, I think Derek, you have problem with your network. Sorry about that, darling. So, probably you restart your, or you come out of the class, you switch off your device, and then you restart, and you rest, you reconnect again you put it on and reconnect again to be fine okay we are in the book of Luke. if you are there we're going to jesus you are in the book of luke chapter 9 if you are in the book of luke chapter 9 good so damola are you ready yes so damola you read from verse 1 to 9 and emmanuela will explain all right yeah go ahead darling one then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority Overall, to preach the kingdom of God. Um, wait. Overall, demons and to cure diseases too. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God, and to heal the sick. Three. And he said unto them, Take nothing for your journey, neither staff, nor bag, neither bread, nor neither money, neither have two coats apiece. Four. And whatsoever house you enter to, there abide. And from there depart. Five. And whosoever will not receive, will not receive you. When you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for testimony against them. Six. And they departed, and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Seven. Now Herod was the chief a part of all that was done by him. And he was perplexed because because it was said by some that John was risen from the dead, eight, and some that Elijah had appeared, and of others that one of the old prophets was risen again, nine. And heard said, John, I have beheaded, but who is this of whom I hear such things? And he desired to see him. Thank you, darling. Let's clap for them all, everyone. So Emmanuel will explain that part and um, Fable will be preparing to read from verse 10 to 17. Emmanuel. Um, so Jesus sent his disciples to go and heal and preach to everyone. And then he gave them instructions that when you to go on your journey, do not take anything with you. And that whoever's house you go into, you stay there and then depart from there. And then finally, whoever who does not receive you, go out of the city, then shake, then take up the dust from your feet for a testimony against them. And the disciples went and they went around preaching and healing to everyone that was with that was cursed or that was sick. And then King Herod um heard that there was some prophets that had been raised from the dead and he killed John and he knew that he killed John but he didn't understand the other prophets that he was hearing of, hearing of and he wanted to go and see them. Thank you darling, God bless you. So from that part uh, of the Bible I just want to add on to what uh, Emmanuel has just explained. She has just actually summarized the, you know, the verse. So we see that Jesus Christ has given the uh, his disciples, you know, um, instruction to go and preach and just Christ is giving us the same uh, instruction today we need to tell other people about uh, christ 
some of us, because of the part of the world we have, we might not have the opportunity, you know, to go out there and be streaming, Jesus Christ is coming soon, repent, and the other stuff. But we can actually tell people, you know, about Christ with our behavior, with our way of, way of life, with our conversation. So some of us, instead of us, you know, talking, you know, um, so some of us, instead of us discussing about, you know, um, Netflix, about um, games and so on, but sometimes we can ship in the word of God. And that's why, because if you are go if, if you are friends with people that are not, you know, uh, children of God, uh, everybody we are children of God anyway, but people that are not, uh, um, that doesn't really believe in, you know, in your God, that doesn't actually know God or something, it might be very difficult for you, you know, to discuss that. But, well, having said that, the Spirit of God will, Teach us anyway, you know, to you know, to you know, to always, you know, to discuss about um, it's God to preach to other people. So we need to. That's why it's necessary we surround ourselves with people of of the same faith, people that have the same value, people that want that you know, kingdom-minded people, people that know Christ. So that it's going to be easy for us. Sometimes we can just oh, let's let's your group we can because I have a group now and and we follow this app on the gateway and we are you know. We are in group, and then every time when I read the Bible, you know, we share the word of God together. So that's, you know, it that's me being in a very good group anyway. God has helped me over time, you know, to have these people who are, who are helping me. You know, I, I'm learning from them, they are learning from me. So that's how our life should be. So um, it's an instruction then, you know, to the disciples to preach. And God is giving us the instruction again today that we need to go out there and preach. We don't need to enforce it. Like, we, we didn't see where Jesus Christ told them that you must tell them by force. He said if they refuse, um... Dust your your shoes, this dust of your, and then move on. So do not be, uh, you know, people might not, you know, accept even when you preach to them, they might not even accept it. But with time, you know, sometimes once one day they will remember and they will thank God that you mentioned it to them. So and um, well, we also saw that um, in that part, Herod was panicking because Herod killed, like my said, killed um, John the Baptist, and they, because. Disciples were everywhere preaching the gospel, so people thought it was John the Baptist that came back again. So Aaron was perplexed, so he wanted to, you know, he wanted to know if he, uh, John the Baptist has reincarnated or, you know, like, so that was why he was panicking, you just to know who is it John the Baptist, who are this set of people talking because they know it was John the Baptist that actually preached like that before. So, um... And that we, we can take off from there is I just I give them instructions that when going now don't take anything with you. And the reason why I just as I said that is so that um you know when you why so for them to be just to avoid distraction, anything, you know, that we bring distraction, you know. So that's why I just as I've told them, don't take anything with you, just go, you know, preach to the people. So and then tell them about the kingdom of everyone of God. And if they listen, that's fine. If they don't, then that's okay as well. So that's what we've learned from that part. So when we read it again, the Bible, the Word of God, uh, we uh, we always um, inspire us, and each time we read, we get you know the inspiration you know into God's word. So um, let's, if we are not clear, let's go back and read again on our own time, and then if you have any question, let me know. Because of our time, the next person, uh, Favor, are you ready? So Favor will be reading from verse ten to seventeen. Why um, Shalom was slain? What Favor read? Favor, meet yourself, darling, and read. It's favor there. Okay, yeah. When the apostles returned, they reported to Jesus what they had done, and then he took them with him and withdrew by themselves to a town called Bethsaida. Eleven. But when the crowd learned about it and followed him, there were few welcomed them and spoke to them of the kingdom of God and healed those in healing. Twelve. Late in the afternoon, the twelve came to him and said, Send the crowd away so we can go to surrounding villages a countryside to find, and find food, your lodgings, because we are in a remote place here. Thirteen, he replied, You give them something to eat. They asked him, You only have five loaves of bread and two fishes, unless you go buy food for all of this crowd. About five thousand men were there. And then he said to his disciples, Have them sit down in groups about fifty each. Fifteen. The disciples did so, and everyone sat down. Fifteen. Taking the five loaves of bread and the two fish, and looking up, up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke them. Then he gave to the disciples to distribute to the people. 
17. Then they all ate and were satisfied, and all the district boys packed up the 12 baskets full of big broken pieces that were left over. Thank you. Let's clap for favor. Let's clap for favor. And let's clap for Emanuela. I don't remember who was clapping. Good. Well done. So, Shalom, are you ready to explain? That's it. Hi, Shalom. Oh, okay, yeah. Omit yourself, Shalom, and explain here. So, the next person reading will be Bolu, verse 21. Um, verse 8. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, it will be Olawale. We'll be reading from verse 18 to 20. So, Shalom, explain. We can't hear you, so you need to speak a little bit louder. Yeah. Oh, I can't hear you. Let me help you. Let me help you. So, um, yeah. So after Jesus Christ, after the disciple, after they came, you know, from the evangelism so they were together and then the crowd keep following them and when it was night um instead of just by sending them away like i said just is very compassionate he's very merciful so just Christ told them that we need to feel these guys we need to you know give them something to hear because they've been with us all day so um but disciples were so they were like there's no way we can feel these people even if we have um hundreds of bread there's no way because they are just too much four thousand um men apart from their wives and children so and just Christ said okay give them instruction make them sit down in 50s so just Christ give them instructions make them sit down in, in 50 companies and when they sat down just Christ asked them what do we have and they said well we have just uh, five loaves of bread and two fishes and just said that's fine that they should bring me so they took the five loaves of bread that's verse 16 and two fishes to to Jesus and Jesus looked up to heaven so, and I think what we should learn from that part is whenever we're in a very difficult situation, the first thing is we pray. So just guys look up to heaven and he bless them and he break the bread and he gave it back to the disciples. And they, in fact, they had to they said that they were filled and after everyone has eaten, they still have like 12 baskets. So we've, in that part, we've, um, we've learned about the, um, the, um, the miracle power of our Lord Jesus Christ. So just why I did it then, he's still doing it today. So in, a, we, in any situation we find ourselves that seems so impossible, so we need to be like Jesus Christ. If we just can touch it and become multiple, but he did one thing. He prayed. He looked into heaven and he blessed. He prayed. And then God indeed multiplied that. So don't worry, children. When you go back, you know, to read it again, you understand better. So because of our time, so we have um, Olawale reading verse 18 to 20. Olawale, are you there, darling? On mute. I read. And um, in new Lua, we explain. Olawale, I'm waiting for you. Unmute you yourself and read. Wait a second. Let me let, uh, I lost the community. Let me just try to find it again. <sighs> okay. So fourteen to eighteen, right? No, you are reading eighteen to twenty. Eighteen to twenty. Yeah. And it came to pass as he was alone praying. His disciples were with him, and he asked them, Whom say the people are that I am? Then answering, John the Baptist said, But some say Elias, and others say that one of the old prophets is risen again. But he said unto them, But whom, yet, whom say ye that I am? Peter answering said, the Christ of God. Good. Thank you. Thank you so much. So read that verse 21, darling. Just add 21 to it. And in you do a Read 21, Olawali. And he spake unto them, Peace be unto you. Let me just check something. Okay. 
Thank you. So um, I'll quickly explain that and in your lower we have to wait. Thank you, Olawale. Thank you, my darling. So um, from that verse 8, we can see that, um, you know, Jesus Christ was praying alone, you know. So Jesus Christ, like I told you last week, Jesus Christ pray always. That's why the fact that Jesus is so powerful. He still pray. So we need to be praying, okay? Samuel, Peter, Abraham, make sure you are praying, okay? Good. So Jesus Christ pray every time. So Jesus Christ, as Jesus was praying, praying alone, his disciples were with him. And Jesus Christ asked them, what do you think people think I am? So they told Jesus Christ that some think you are John the Baptist, some think you are old prophet. And Jesus Christ, okay, what do you, my disciple? Because you are the guys that follow me everywhere. You are the guys that have done several miracles in your presence. I've taught you a lot. What do you think I am? Then Peter said, you are Christ, the Son of God. And the Jesus Christ was like, wow. Jesus Christ was so happy. And Jesus Christ told them not to tell anyone yet who he is. So that's the summary. So um, in your what do you want to add to that? Tell me one thing you planned from that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, try to meet yourself and see if it will work again. Mm -hmm. Ah, in your don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. So what we've learned there, um, while we wait for the next set will be Bolu. Bolu, you'll be reading from 20, 22 to 27, okay? Bolu, verse 22 to 20. And Merit were slain. So Bolu, you are reading verse 22 to 27. Merit were slain. So what I've learned, what I've learned anyway from that part is... I've learned, uh, uh, let's say, um, yeah, what I would, I would say I've learned from that part is I've learned who Jesus Christ indeed is. So I've learned that um, when I'm following someone, I need to know who that person is. So, and um, one of the things I've learned, you know, from, apart from the Bible, apart from that verse of my, you know, my journey with Christ, I've learned that um, God is an unquestionable God. God does what he wants or what, is, what he likes so and I've learned that all I just need to do as a, as a child of God is to pray that God let your will be done over my life so that's something I've learned in my journey with Christ so I may ask you one of you that okay tell me what you plan so far since you've been you know you've been born into into Christ some of us will be going to church what have you learned about this Christ what is something that you've learned that over time you've sat down that this God out? So we need to learn. We need to learn to know more about Christ. And we can only know more about Christ when we put this word, when we, you know, follow his instruction, and when we listen to his spirit, Holy Spirit. Okay. So um Bolo, are you ready, darling? So Bolo and meet yourself, my love, and read from twenty two to twenty seven. Say him. The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected, rejected of the elders and chief and chief priests and scribes, and be slain and be raised the third day. And he said to all to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake the, the same shall save it. Mm -hmm. For that is a man advantage, advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself, or be cast anyway. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed, mm -hmm. and when shall come in his own glory. But I tell you of a truth, there be some standing standing here, which shall not stay of death till they feed the kingdom of God. Thank you, darling. Let's start for Bolu, everyone. Let's start for Bolu. Let's start for Bolu. Well done. Bolu, well done. So, um, Merit, do you want to explain? Just say something. What you've learned from that? It might be a verse. Just say something. Um, in verse 20, 22, um, it says, um, the Son of Man, who is to suffer to be that death, the people should reject him, the, the sheep, the tithe, the, uh, the priest, the scribes, and the, and the chief, but then be raised um, at the, uh, on the um, third day. And um, in following part, in, in say, this one desires to deny himself, he should 
take off his clothes and follow them him as a him, follow him. And in in um, Okay, let me help you. Let me help you, darling. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. So I think there's a noise in Baba. Let me help you so you can be okay. Good. So um well like the uh, subtopic, Jesus Christ, um, that part just predicts predict his death. So that verse 22 that um, my darling just mentioned. So the Son of Man must suffer. So just I was telling them about how he's going to suffer, he's going to be rejected by so many, how he's going to be slave, uh, um, slain, and how he was going to, he, on the third day, he, he will be raised, you know, from death. So I was just telling them, you know, at that point in time, because just as has not died, he's still with them, so it's just giving them, you know, um, you know, telling them about what is to be happen, so that they will, so that they will be prepared. So just I was just telling the disciple in that part, and he further stressed that they need to follow him, they need to deny everything, you know. And some of the things God wants us to deny to their children is our, it can be worldliness, it can be pride, it can be the way of of life, the way we we live. You know our life we need to children we need to work on ourselves you know some of us we can be very rude even to our parents to others we need to we, we need to work on our attitude because let me tell you something you'll be judged by your attitude so as some of our attitude might you know can can prevent us in life some of our attitudes can can some people's attitude we we chase away blessings from them and some the attitude we attract favor onto their head so we might look at ourselves, what are, how do I behave, how do I compose myself, especially in public, because people will summarize, people will judge you, you know, with your attitude. So I'm just talking about that. And so, you know, some of the things we need to give away, so sometimes, um, you know, can be, you know, our, probably, um, so, some of our lifestyle, yeah, I've talked about attitude, lifestyle, so some of you, you know, some people you spend, some you spend a lot of time, you know, talking about others, you know, gossiping, doing a lot of stuff, you know, that is not right, and the Spirit of God will be telling you, because you're a child of God, you are praying, you are attending this program, you are reading the Bible, you are going to church, you know, there's some things that the Word of God will be telling you is wrong. Let's try to change, okay, children? Because if not, then, um, well, uh, it's going to be very difficult for us to carry our cross and follow Christ. Some of these things we, we in doubt. So, some, sometimes if you spend some of your time, you know, um, reading Bibles, you know, um, you know, watching games, you know, you spend a whole day on Hollywood, you spend on Netflix and so on, you don't have time to actually feed your spirit. You know, as we are eating, as we are feeding our body, we need to, the Word of God, you know, is, um, is a food of spirit. When you read the Word of God, somehow, you know, you get, you, you'll be fulfilled and your spirit, you, you know, you'll be in tune with, with, in tune with Christ. So, but if we don't spend time, we'll spend time on some other things that are not relevant. You know, it will tell. So, just what he's telling us today that we should deny some of all these things that are not, you know, Christ worthy and we should take up our cross and we should follow Him. So, I pray may God help us in Jesus' name. So, let's go to the next. The next person reading will be um, Emanuela. So, she'll be reading um, trans, um, this transfiguration of Jesus Christ from verse 38 to 36. And Zara from London will be explaining. So the people summarize my class tonight. I'm calling Peter to summarize. I'm calling Miriam. I'm calling Damola. So, yeah. Okay. And it came to pass about an eighth day. Hold on, my darling. So we are reading verse 28 now. So make sure you are there. Luke chapter 9, verse 28. Okay. Continue. Yeah. Emanuela. Oh, what's happening? I think it's freeze. Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, oh yeah, continue. From verse 28, yeah. I start from 28. Yes, please. 28 to 36, yeah. Okay, ma'am. Verse 28. And it came to pass about an eight days after these days, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistening. Verse 30. And behold, there talked with him two men, when, which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory and spake of his decrees de which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. 32. But Peter, that, Peter, but Peter and they that went were with him and were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory, 
and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be the here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias, not knowing what he said. Verse 34. While he thus spake, there came a cloud, and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. Verse 36. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone, and they kept it close, and told no man in these days any of those things which they had seen. Fantastic. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Clap for you later. Zara, do you want to explain? If, even if it's one verse, you can explain that. Zara from London. Is Zara? Okay. Zara, meet yourself. I know you have a network problem, but I'll meet and talk to you. She's Zara. Okay, let me help Zara because of our time. We don't have time, you know, to waste. So, um, yeah, she just read about the um, the um, transfiguration of Jesus Christ, what actually happened. You know, some of us, we've, we've been hearing that word. So if you want to understand what actually happened, what is this transfiguration of Jesus Christ, then you need to read that um, um, verse 28 to probably 32. So, and it came to pass about eight hours after this say, it took Peter and John and James and went up into the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, that is when the transfiguration happened. The fashion of his countenance were altered and his garment was white and glittering. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias. So Moses appeared to, uh, while they were there, when Jesus Christ took those three um, of his disciples to mountain to pray, then something happened as they were praying. Jesus Christ casting a change. He became white. And then he became um, uh, very um, glistering. And then two men appeared suddenly, and they were speaking, you know, with Jesus. Why the disciple were heavily slept, um, um, were, um, were heav heavy with sleep, so they slept off. You know that didn't happen because it was kind of mystery. So they they just slept off. So and um, later when they they were awake, Peter was saying to Jesus Christ, "Oh my God, what he has solved." Jesus Christ was um, Peter was just saying to Jesus Christ, "Let's build tabernacle. Let's build church here for one for you, one for Moses, one for Peter." So why he was saying that Jesus Christ? It was a little bit funny. So Jesus Christ, um, you know, while they were still talking about that, and what suddenly everywhere becomes so dark, and the shadow overshadowed them, and then um, there's a voice came from. Heaven, like it happens when Jesus Christ was baptized. Um, you know, um, when we read about the passage of Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ was coming out of the water, when heaven opened. So this same thing, this thing happened again, but this time around, it was during the transfiguration of Jesus Christ. So the cloud covered every one of them there, and um, a voice um, came um, came out from the cloud saying, "This is my son. Hear him." So that's another the second confirmation. So sometimes I can ask you, um, tell me when did we have the second confirmation of uh, Jesus Christ? The second confirmation happened during the transfiguration of Jesus Christ. The first confirmation happened during the, the first one during the baptism of Jesus Christ. The second one happened during the transfor, transfiguration of Jesus Christ. So we're going to the next one. Um, who is reading? Um, Sharon. So Sharon is your time that we are reading. You are reading verse 37 to 43. So and Damora will explain. So this this part is about how Jesus Christ healed people that were possessed with demons. So over to you, darling. Verse 37. Verse... And it came to pass okay. so on the next day, as he would come down from the hill, much people met him. 38. And behold, a man of the company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is my, my only child. 39. And lo, a spirit taken him, and he suddenly crept out, and it teared of him that he formeth again, and bruising him hardly departed from him. 40. And I pursued thy disciples, and cast him out, as they could not. 41. And Jesus answering him said, O faithless and prophet generation, 
How long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. 42. And as he was yet a coming, the devil threw him down and tear him. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. 43. And they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. But while they wondered everyone at all things which Jesus did, he said unto his disciples, 44. Let, let no, that's fine, things. darling. For so, the theory. You are reading for theory. Thank you. So I quickly explain because of our time. So what happened there? Um, uh, uh, sorry, Damola. Um, I quickly explain. Thank you so much, um, Sharon. So um, what happened is um, why Jesus Christ? Well, they were still there, you know, um, with his disciples. So there is a man whose um, son was um, whose child was uh, not feeling fine. So this child was having, I believe, his paralysis. That the man's child keep foaming, you know. And he took it to the disciple, and the disciple prayed and prayed and prayed, nothing happened. So the man came to Jesus to tell Jesus Christ that they have come, I've met your disciple, they couldn't do nothing. So Jesus Christ said, don't worry, Jesus Christ told him to bring the, you know, the, his son to him. And Jesus Christ prayed and he healed the son of the disease. And Jesus Christ was just reproving the disciples that whole faithless generation. Because uh, Jesus Christ, um, because, you know, that part uh, taught us that we need to, you know, have faith in the Lord because from that part we can see that the disciple exercised doubt. So anytime you are praying to God and you doubt about something, it might not come to pass. But if you have faith that God is going to do it, even God has not done it, you know, it will happen. But each time you start doubting God, like, I'm not sure he's going to do it, it's too big for him to do, then it might not happen. So that's what we've learned there that we need to, you know, as a children of God, we need to exercise our faith. So, um, because of our time, I'm going to call a quick reader to, okay, um, verse 44 to 50. Um, who is that person reading? I put someone there. Mary, I'm going to read that part, 44 to 50, quick. And the Bora will explain. Okay. Don't forget things I tell you now. The Son of Man will be handed over to the control of men. 45. But the followers did not understand what Jesus meant. The money was, was all hidden was hidden was hidden from them so they could not understand it but when they they were oh my God. to ask okay. Jesus about what he said. Forty six. Jesus' followers began to have an argument about which one of them was the greatest. Forty seven. Jesus knew what they were thinking. So he took a little child and stood the child beside him. Forty eight. Then Jesus said, If anyone accepts a little child like this in my name, then he accepts me. And when he accepts me, he accepts the ones who sent him. He is the least among you all. He is the greatest. 49. John answered, Master, we saw someone using your name to force demons out of people. We told him to stop because he does not belong to our group. 50. Jesus said to him, don't stop him. If a person is against it, then he is for you. Thank you, darling. So Deborah, do you want to explain that part? I'm going to call Deborah to so explain. I'm going to call your homie to explain. So quick, quick, because of our time. So what happened was someone was uh, using Jesus' power to try and be Jesus. So basically Jesus did not want to do anything. So he said that he should leave them away and that God like would do something. Okay, let me help you, darling. Thank you. Thanks for that attempt. So why um the another someone else, another group of people they were praying and um, casting out demons in the name of Jesus and the disciples were just looking at them. These are not part of us. They are not following us. Why are they casting out demons in the name of Christ? So and um, Jesus Christ, they came to Jesus to report and Jesus Christ rebuked them. Jesus Christ told them that since they are not against you, then it means they are for you. Because if they are praying and they are casting out demons in the name of God, in the name of Christ, then they are for you. So you don't need to, you know, like today. So some people might not belong to our denomination, so probably some of us redeem. Some people CAC, some people, you know, Catholic. So we shouldn't be judgmental, like, oh, because they are not so so so, then, you know. So, or we just, in as much as they are calling on the name of the Lord, that's fine. We don't, we shouldn't judge them or feel like, oh, they are outcast or something. So that's what I'm going to learn from that part. So, um, Fire Kimi, sorry, you're supposed to read it, but that's fine. So from 51 to 56, if you quick, quick, quick. If you will explain, um, we read and Fire Kimi will explain. 51 to 56, if you quick. It came to pass 
when the days were near that he should be taken up, he intently set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. They went and entered into the village of the Samaritans so as to prepare for him. They didn't receive him because he was traveling with his face set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from the sky and destroy them just as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them. You don't know of what kind of spirit you are. For the Son of Man did, didn't come to destroy man's life, but to save them. Thank you, Daddy. So that place is very straightforward. So, um, Fire Fumi, do you want to tell me what to plant from that part? Um, I learned that God doesn't, when God sent down Jesus, not to destroy people, but to save people's life, even when they've made him, like, angry, in a way. So, he's, like, there, even when, like, someone's made a mistake, he, he doesn't, he doesn't, like, he'll punish them, but he won't, like, Give me the for what they've done. Thank you, darling. God bless you. So thank you. So some of us, you know, we're praying, you know, um, uh, some of your mind is here. Uh, we'll be praying, you know, like, um, you know, sometimes we'll be praying and, you know, God, uh, we'll be praying for power, but God is not giving us power, you know, to destroy, you know. You know, God will be praying for some gift from God, okay? But because the purpose why just Christ is on heart is to save, it's not to destroy. So we need to understand that. So that, that's why sometimes when in the Bible it says that we should love our enemies as, our, as ourselves. So Jesus Christ is trying to tell us that he is, God is love. Okay, so God will not destroy. God will not destroy. Um, that's why we have to be very careful as well. We don't allow people, you know, to mess up with us. Because if, for example, for being somebody mistakenly stab you and you go to heaven, the person can still repent. And if the person comes to God and like, Lord Jesus, forgive me, I've sinned, Lord have mercy, God will still forgive that person. The person will get to heaven. And if at that point in time when the person stab you or do evil to you, and you don't have no Christ, you might go to hell. So the person will go to hell because if you don't know Christ, then you go to hell. So, and if the person that have actually killed you know that individual come back to jesus christ repented of the of his or sin just and we forgive so jesus christ has come you know to save to save the world so that's the marriage of jesus christ jesus christ has not come to destroy the world so we need to understand that so whatever privilege we have don't use it to destroy other people look for a way to save people and well like i said if you are into it. you have friends because i'm talking because we're teenagers we have some group that we feel they are very destructive because children you know where you are going to every one of us we know where we are going to in life okay so we can't afford to allow someone or some set you know to destroy us so if there's a particular friend you have you know that they don't have the same the same mind they don't have the same value they don't they are not they are not christian like you so you might want to you, you might want to um find the right group for you okay and you can do that by praying lord separate me from anyone that is not good for you no simple prayer like that if you keep praying there's a way god will separate you and you won't feel hot you will feel disappointed and they will not feel bad okay they will just go naturally and you pray god connect me with your with your children connect me because you want to feel your destiny and you need to be position yourself you know to be with the right people so i don't know why that came but it just came so let's take note of that is chizara there chizara are you there so the last, I'm, I'm going to call um, Samuel. Samuel, do you want to read? Where's Samuel? Who's Samuel? Yeah. Oh, Samuel, good. So Samuel, read on um, 57 to 62. Why wisdom is play? And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I followed you, would I say about that voice? And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nest, but the Son of Man had no where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but to go down and preach the kingdom of God. Verse 61. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the cloth and looking back, he speaks for the kingdom of God. Thank you, darling. God bless you. 
So, wisdom, you want to explain? Sorry, should I not clap for you? Clap for everybody at the end because of our time, okay? We have five minutes. So, wisdom, just explain even if it's one verse. Mm -hmm. I learned that Jesus finds solution and death, we should follow him and he will answer us. Oh. And um, I understand that it came to pass that as they went in the way that a car, car certain men say unto them unto say unto him lord who follow them with with her server whichever way you to, go mm. with her server to go okay and then go say let me help you, darling. Oh. Let me help you. Oh my god, mommy is always on food, so the noise is on your background. Thank you. Let me help you. Uh, kindly mute, yeah. So, um, the, um, well, that part is just, uh, just, just telling us that we need to follow him, you know, with um, we need to leave everything and follow him. So, we shouldn't, um, because we shouldn't give God conditions, you know. Some people, like for the first man, he said he wants to go and bury uh, on his um. His father, the other one said, wants to say goodbye to his people before following Jesus. So just just want us to follow him with all our heart. And the, what is most important thing to Jesus Christ is we preaching the gospel. So the question of children, are you preaching the gospel? Are you preaching the word of God? Like I said, um, some of us, yeah, some of us, we, we, we have as we can preach the gospel in several ways. But depending on your location, like UK now, you know, you can't go inside the bus and start telling, repent, give your life to Jesus, you know. I remember sometimes ago in Nigeria, you know, when I was still growing up and when I first, you know, accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. So then I remember then oh, I, I go for money crying where you say, <laughs> give your life to Jesus, give your life to Jesus, you know, the hand is coming. You know, I do that, you know, long time ago, but UK, I can't do that. But the best way I can preach gospel here, if I have a leaflet. So I can share some reflect that talks about heaven. So I invest. I remember then I invest. Um, I save some money, you know, to get leaflet, and I put it in some strategic, um, strategic places, you know, where people can see, you know, and I, I, you know, about Jesus. So people will read and about Jesus. Another way where you can, um, you can teach, um, tell people about, um, about Jesus is like I said, through our way of life, how we. People want to get closer to us if we are really kind, we are lovely, and by then we'll be able to tell them about Christ. You know, you know, you can invite people to your church, like program like this. I believe you have friends, you know, teenagers, like, oh, there's this Bible club I attend. You want to come and see if you love it? You know, you can invite people, you know, and then um, in one way or the other, we can pray that this Holy Spirit should teach us how to, you know, to, to preach the gospel. And like I said, if you have friends, you can mention Jesus Christ to them if you really love them. So, but you can't enforce, okay? Which you mention Jesus Christ, there's Jesus, there's heaven, there's hell, you know. And you say that, yeah, you say something. It's better not to say it at all, you know. If you don't say it at all, then that. But if you say you mention it to them, and one day they can come back to you, and that will touch me. You know, I want to know more about Christ. So, or you can buy a gift, like Bible, you know. Some of us will be saving. You can say, okay, this is my friend. I love her so much, but she doesn't know Christ. So, I'm buying Bible as a gift, you know, for the person. And you'll be surprised. I've given the um, Bible to a friend. And she's a she's white. A white belongs to a white community, and she was so happy. But before I gave her the Bible, I was so like, oh God, I don't know how she's going to feel. But I just prayed and I got the Bible for her as a birthday. She was so happy and she always read her Bible. So something like that. So, so I pray may God help us. So our assignment will be to read Luke chapter ten. Okay. So children, Luke chapter ten. And next week, let me just quickly look at what we'll be studying next week. So um. Just give me one sec, children. I just want to quickly check what we'll be studying. Oh, okay. It's not coming up. So let's read that. Um, let's listen to this video again on some of us. And yeah, let's learn something, you know, and then let's um, ensure that we are applying this to our to our lives. So I'll call two people. I know the time has fast pain. Just give me five minutes, children, okay? So I'm going to call Peter. Peter, tell me what you plan tonight. So Peter will tell me what she's um, he has learned tonight. But be one thing, just mention it briefly, okay? Or meet yourself and talk. Then I'll call Damola. We talk. Uh, I think Shalom Network is not good, so I'll call Miriam. So okay, tell me what you've learned, Peter. Or Abraham, who want to help? Or meet yourself and talk. So, okay. Yeah, that. Okay. 
We should follow him with all our hearts. Okay, we should follow Christ with all our hearts. We shouldn't give Christ condition that, okay, God, I'll follow you by December. I'll follow you if you do this in my life. If you do, so we should follow him with all our, we should be genuine, you know, in our Christian life. We should love God with all our heart. Thank you. So, Miriam, do you want to tell me how to plan so far? Uh, I learned uh, many things, but to be honest, uh, most things I do in my head because of lots of information. Okay. But from what I can gather, um, Bri I learned... Just briefly, yes. Yeah. Um, always follow God wholeheartedly. It's kind of like you, if you're going to follow God, you have to leave everything behind. You can't be part of this world and be with God. It's kind of like letting go of the worldly things if you really want to be with Jesus. Um, I've also learned to have faith because you just said to what to call them. If you have faith, I will do things for you. And he did. He healed the person. Mm. He said not to be precious to people with the child, not the child with the um, when people were using his name to heal people. He was like, if they're not against you, they're not your enemy. Mm. Let them come. You shouldn't like gatekeep them from learning about God. That's his whole purpose is to spread the gospel. And then what's it called? I think there was a story about the child and how he was the greatest out of all of them, even though he's young. Um, I didn't really understand that, but I think that could be a really powerful verse. And yeah. Oh, okay. Send me the verse, um, read it again and send it to me so I will talk about it in the next class because of our time. We don't really have time. Oh, Deborah, do you want to, um, Damola, do you want to tell me what to plant tonight? I think Damola yeah, is struggling. Sorry, I, okay, all right. Yeah, sorry, I kept on. I, kept, I know you, bad your connection. network is bad, yeah. So, um, what I want today is, is that basically we've just been reading Luke chapter 9 okay. and basically it's about Jesus, him, like some key events in his life, mm. some key events in his life leading up to his death. And what I've learned today is, is that about, I've learned about God, I've learned about how we should be, how we should be a good Christian, I've learned that I've learned that we should act like God and we shouldn't be selfish or stubborn. Thank you, darling. God bless you. So I want to quickly explain the transfiguration of Jesus. If you know, you know it. If you're into Jesus, the transfiguration, briefly, that part, if you want to, who want to explain that? The transfiguration and what happened? Okay, I'll call... <laughs> Oh, no, Mary, you've spoken. Thank you, Daddy. Let me call someone. Um, Bolu, uh, Bolu, quickly explain what you understand by that. By what? The transfiguration of Jesus Christ. Transfiguration of Jesus Christ. Okay, well, if you know you want, you know it. Okay, so that will be our assignment then because of our time. So, um, if you want to explain it, but I think you can explain it online. Don't worry, that's fine. Um, okay. let's add that as an assignment. Okay, everybody send me what you understand by the trans transfiguration of Jesus. So, um, Fayokumi, do you have someone beside you? Is anyone learning with you? Is it just you? It's noisy here. Oh, it's noisy. Okay, that's fine. So let's pray, children. Let's close our eyes. Let's pray. We have to pray upon you. That will, that, will, that will be the end of tonight's program. Let's thank God for the grace. Let's thank God for the opportunity, you know, to connect. Thank God for his mercy. Thank God for keeping you alive to this moment. Thank God for the grace to learn about him. Let's thank God for this opportunity. Thank God. Make sure you are praying. Thank God. Thank God for your parents. Thank God for daddy and mommy. Thank God for the, for the world at the moment. So thank God. Yeah, we know that there are coronavirus um, uh, problems, but we know that God will intervene. So let's thank God for his mercy. Thank God none of us contracted that virus. If you have coronavirus, you won't connect tonight. The person will be on that ventilation or ventilator. So close your eyes, make sure you are praying. Thank God. Close your eyes, make sure you are praying. Merit, make sure you are praying over their wisdom. Close your eyes. And then pray, the next prayer point, pray, God have mercy on me, close your eyes, have mercy in every way that I've not been um, doing the right thing, you know, in every way that I've been experiencing um, faithlessness, that I don't have faith in you in any way that I've been, I've, I've not been doing what I'm supposed to do. 
pray lord have mercy some of us we've not been doing our assignment we've not been following us here close your eyes pray god have mercy lord show me mercy have mercy on me and the last prayer point let's pray god give me grace give me that grace oh lord to always read the word to know more about you i want to know more about you this year you know some of us we don't even read our bible we don't read it at all so close that eyes and make sure you are praying lord give me the grace to read i want to know more about you because I want to follow you with all my heart. I want to follow you. I want I, I want to be your, your disciple. I don't want to follow the world. But I need the grace to read your word so that I will know you better. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's clap for Jesus. Amen. Clap for Jesus. Okay. Yeah. We're going to share the grace. So children, once again, when you come to this class, you need to be well behaved. Okay. We have other children here and we have some parents, you know, watching our video. So we need to be of good manners, okay, when you are here on this platform. So when I ask you to do something, okay, you be patient and then you listen to her. And then when you, you know, no, don't worry, next week I'm going to call you and I'll teach you about, um, I'll teach you about courtesy. So we need to have that, okay. So I want excellent children because some children will be joining and parents will not condo or raska among us. So make sure you are well behaved in class. You don't copy, copy the good ones. You see some of these children, they are well behaved. So make sure you copy the good ones, okay? Good. God bless you. Your assignment, read on Luke chapter 10. And then you tell me, send me what you understand by, you send me what you understand by this transfiguration of Jesus. Thank you. Take care. Have a lovely evening. Bye-bye for now. Bye, Bye. Ma. Bye, darlings.